welcome to another video. Today it is the long-awaited Celine bag sew along. I'm going to be talking you through making the Celine tote bag by Swoon Patterns. I have also added in a few little extras because this is me we're talking about and when do I ever make my life simple. I've also added in the Pocket A supplement from Chris W Designs. I don't actually talk you through the sewing of this pattern because you wouldn't need to buy the pattern in that case but I highly recommend that you do get this. It's going to be the best two Australian dollars you've ever spent and you will put it in every single bag as you'll probably see in all the bags that I make from going forward. I've also added a internal zipper pocket because I like having a lot of pockets and also I prefer that as a turning method for my bag. The other addition that I've made to this bag is that I have added foam to the bottom and both the front and the back panels. I find this bag a little bit too slouchy for me without it. It's definitely something that you could do without though. It doesn't need the foam, it's just a personal preference and I will talk you through sewing that in as well. So for part one we're going to be talking talking about how you print the pattern out, stick the pattern pieces together, mirroring the pattern pieces and then using those to cut out your fabrics. So let's get started. For this tutorial you're going to need your pattern. I'm also using the Pocket A supplement from Chris W Designs which will be linked in the description bar down below. Your exterior fabric, lining fabric, contrast fabric, if this is your first time making this bag, don't use vinyl. Use denim or a decor weight fabric or another quilting cotton for your contrast. But if you've made this bag before or you've worked with vinyl before, then a vinyl can look really nice. Interfacing, foam interfacing. This is an additional extra that I use for this pattern. It's not called for in the pattern instructions. You're going to want three zips for this project the way that I have done it. I want two for the exterior and one for the interior pocket, which again is an addition to the pattern that I've made. I'm using continuous zipper for the first time, should be interesting. You're going to need some bag hardware as well. I am again deviating from the pattern and using these triangle anchor straps. I've also got the strap ends, purse feet, a half inch swivel clasp and D-ring, rulers, wonder clips, scissors, matching thread, double sided tape, a pen, fray check, you're going to need some sellotape and you're also going to need some tracing paper. So let's get started. Really important thing to note when you're printing off your pattern is that you want to do it at 100% or zip, you know there's no scaling on this and before you start doing anything you want to measure these boxes and make sure that it is measuring the two inches square or the five centimeter square if you're working with centimeters that it should do. Again, ask me how I know. When you're printing this pattern, it's much easier to do it from your computer or your laptop. I've found, and so have other people that I have taught, that if you try and print this out from your phone or from your iPad or a device like that, it can get a bit squiffy and it can come out smaller than you're expecting, which is the last thing that you want. Double check these boxes to make sure that you have printed it out at the correct scale. So the next thing you're gonna do is chop out all of your pieces. I'm not going to be cutting out either the woven handle connector or the vinyl handle connector because I'm using the uh, triangular anchor straps that I showed you in the previous clip but if you want to use these then you're going to need to cut those out as well and they're very easy to do and you can just follow along with the instructions for these. The other thing you want to note uh, is there are a couple of pieces that you will need to put together so we've got a piece here that has a B at the top and then this is the corresponding so there's two B's so you're going to need to stick those together. So when you're cutting this out, I like to leave the top part of this piece of paper here. I like to leave this intact so I've got something to then stick this onto. But I'm going to cut this all out and then I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's get on with that. Okay, so I have cut out the top part with the B on it and the bottom part with the B on it. And as I mentioned, I have left excess paper at the top here so that I have something to overlap this one too. And what you want to do is match up the solid lines and the B's like that. Sticky tape and stick it down. So there we have our gusset panel pattern piece. So this, this piece actually uh, you need to cut in two different ways. The first way for the exterior you'll need to cut four of these. So two this way and then you'll need to flip your pattern piece over and cut out two this way. And once you've done that you're then going to fold along this dotted line and then you're going to use this pattern piece to cut out two of your lining fabric with 
on the fold with this edge on the fold i'm going to show you the pieces i've cut out when i've done it so that everything is nice and clear but you should end up with a pattern piece that looks like this there's also another pattern piece which is which has two a's on it which you will need to do in the same manner stick the two edges together and there's the piece so there's piece a and piece a bottom so you need to stick those two together in the same manner that you've done here so once you've got all of these cut out all the ones on the fold i actually like to trace those out onto tracing paper and trace it so that i have the entire pattern piece and that's very easy to do all you do want to do is put your pattern piece down like this put your tracing paper over it trace around it turn your pattern piece over line up that fold edge that you've done and then trace around the other side and that way you have the full pattern piece from your piece that's meant to be cut on the fold and just for some fabrics it's uh, for, for ease of placing prints or motifs on the fabric and things like that it's just a slightly easier I think to do this so I've done that for pretty much all of the pieces the one I find it most helpful for is the lining piece so we need to cut these ones out of our exterior fabric without that dotted line folded under because this is our seam allowance so we're going to need to put the seam those together so this will be our stitching line but for the lining panel you do need to cut on the fold so again what I've done is I have turned that fold line under placed my pattern tracing paper over the top traced around the pattern shape and drawn the line down the center then turned that pattern piece over matched up that line and trace the other side so that I have the full pattern piece. This way is if I have my fabric doubled over I can cut the two pieces that I need in one go rather than having to cut one on the fold, reposition the pattern piece and cut another one on the fold. Again this is a personal preference of mine but it's just something that I find slightly easier to do especially as I say for being fuss fussy cutting out uh, pattern placements and things like that. I'm going to start cutting out my fabric. Okay so I have four of the exterior gusset panels traced out onto my vinyl so I have made sure that I have one this way one this way second one that way and second one this way I've also traced out my two straps the pattern calls for the straps to be 18 inches long which I find is a little short for me so I've made these 24 inches long and I'm doing the double sided straps so rather than doing them at four inches I have done them at two inches and then I've marked the center point which will help me when I am top stitching the raw edges into the center later it does mean that we're going to need to cut exactly the same straps out of our decorative fabric but again I will show you that when we get there so I'm going to cut all these out and then get on to the decorative fabric Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm adding foam into my pattern because I find the bag very slouchy, especially if you're making it from lighter weight fabrics. So what I like to do is actually trace around my pattern pieces and you're going to want to trace around the back panel and you're going to need two of those. So I've done that there. You're also going to need a, a roughly six inch by nine inch rectangle for the base of your bag, but we're not going to cut that out until we've actually made the bag and measured it so that we can get the exact right size piece so this bit here is not going to go to waste okay so i have everything cut out and before i show you and go through all the bits and pieces that you should also have i'm going to say that post-it notes and wonder clips are your best friends when it comes to bag making ask me how i know but let's go through all the bits and pieces that you should have cut out now okay so first up we have the closure strap and that needs to be nine inches by one inch and you need two of those i'm using my exterior fabric for those then we have the pocket tabs. I'm deviating from the pattern here and I am cutting two at six inches long by one inch wide because I like to use a slightly shorter zip for the outside zipper than the pattern recommends. So I need a longer pocket tab. Then we have the main zipper tab. That's three inches by two inches and that's for a one inch wide zipper. I've got one of those. We've got the zipper panels. So we want four of these and they're 10 inches long by one and a half inches wide. The pattern doesn't call for interfacing, but I kind of like to interface them. So I have four interfacing and four of, again, my exterior fabric, and that is the zipper panels. These are pieces that the pattern doesn't actually call for. The pattern doesn't have an internal zipper pocket, but I much prefer to have one of those in my bags anyway, and I also prefer to berth my bags through these. So you're gonna need a zipper facing, which is three inches wide by eight inches long, and I've got one 
of lining and one of interfacing. It doesn't matter what you cut this out of because it's never actually going to be seen but it's just a way of making the interior of the zipper pocket seamless so you can't see any of the zipper tape raw edges. And then for the interior pocket I've cut eight inches wide by six and a half inches tall and I've cut two of those. Then we have the straps and as I mentioned we're doing double sided straps for this bag so I have the outer, the vinyl, I have 24 inches long by 2 inches wide and then out of my main exterior fabric I have the same 24 inches long and 2 inches wide. That is 6, six inches longer than the pattern recommends for the straps to be but I prefer them to be a little bit longer as I find it difficult to get it over my shoulder otherwise. Right. Now we're moving on to the actual pattern pieces. So this is the exterior gusset panels and we've cut four of these and we've cut it so that we have the seam allowance included. So we want four of those and we want two matching pairs. So we've got one, two, three, four. So you have four of those and they will be sewn together like that and then like that and that's going to be the gusset of your bag but you want to make sure that you definitely have the two kind of mirrored pairs of those and again that is this pattern piece the exterior gusset panel and that's cut with the seam allowance included so ignoring that fold line and because I'm using vinyl I've not cut interfacing for these because this is actually a fairly stable and sturdy vinyl if you're using something like a denim a corduroy or quilting weight cotton you will want to have the corresponding interfacing pieces so you'd need four interfacing pieces that would match your four external pieces but as I say because I'm using vinyl I've not done that next we have the lining gusset panel and this is the one that was cut cut on the fold. As I mentioned earlier I like to trace my pattern pieces out so that they're the full piece so that I don't need to cut on the fold so that I can double the fabric up and cut the two pieces I need in one go. So we've got two lining and two interfacing there. Here we have the bottom lining panel which is this piece and again I've doubled my pattern piece up and we have, should have two of, of the lining fabric and again two of the interfacing. This is the top lining panel, so again we should have two lining and two interfacing. This is the pocket panel, this one's a little bit different, so you should have one of your exterior fabric and an interfacing one for that, and then you should have two of your lining fabric and two interfacing for that. So you end up with three pieces of fabric and three pieces of interfacing in this shape. Top front panel is the one out of your exterior fabric and then one interfacing. The back panel is one out of your exterior fabric, one of interfacing and then if your fabric needs it and you want to add foam you're going to need two of these cut out from the foam. The final piece you'll need will be a piece of foam for the bottom of your bag but I haven't cut that to size as yet because it, everything can can get a little bit different as you're cutting and making your bag. So I'm gonna measure and cut this to size when we get to that stage. So now that we've got everything cut out and all the interfacing done, we can start sewing. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.